Uh, hey everyone, welcome back to the series where we are looking at um, this new add-on for Blender called BioBlender. Uh, today we're gonna uh, uh, keep looking at how uh, the workflow of uh, combining proteins with membranes and then we're also gonna look at um, a couple of things that uh, we can add to make it look even more realistic. Uh, Alright, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do in this scene is uh, show you that uh, these uh, operators uh, work with um, work with uh, other objects not just prote proteins uh, so for that let me first import a uh, planar membrane and what I'm gonna do here is uh, basically showcase uh, I already have some collections here from before but let me go ahead and make the protein collection uh, let me rename this to one here and then let me make sure this one is called uh, proteins uh, so once I have that I'm basically gonna add uh, a monkey uh, I'm gonna give it some subdivisions and maybe make it shade smooth uh, then I'm also gonna grab a uh, UV uh, oh, not a circle uh, but let me grab like a UV sphere give it sub subdivisions and make it uh, smooth uh, let me grab also let's say a uh, cylinder That's, uh, my last object is one I'm not gonna subdivide uh, let's go and fix that normals okay so now we have these uh, three objects then uh, I'm just gonna scale them all uh, let me make them small and then control A apply scale and now just to show that this works with any objects I'm just gonna select uh, uh, my membrane here uh, or I could in fact uh, instead of a membrane I could have a, another mesh maybe uh, another monkey I can subdivide this uh, shade smooth maybe apply that uh, modifier so let me go ahead and apply that. So I could grab my monkey and then do um, uh, make sure that monkey we just added is not in the proteins collection. Uh, we could do that, but what's gonna happen is that we're gonna be uh, scattering onto itself, and it it, it <laughs> it's not a good idea to do that. Uh, for now, let's just grab our monkey and do scatter. And as we see here, uh, it basically turns into any object. Uh, it, uh, all the objects in that collection we basically get here. Uh, we can again uh, increase the uh, density um, can increase the density of the spheres or we want more monkeys or maybe we want more cylinders so we can play around with the density of each we get a slider for each of those uh, we can even play with the cross section of the monkey uh, so if we go here we can play with that cross section of the monkey uh, this is just showcasing that uh, these operators uh, most of them work for uh, anything uh, the displacement is also going to work on the monkey uh, so even if you're not working on something biological, this can also be useful. Um, uh, let me go ahead and uh, remove that uh, modifier from my monkey and uh, maybe I delete uh, the sphere and then I only have those two objects. I can go ahead and do a scatter again. Uh, I'm only going to get those two objects again. But if I wanted to scatter uh, 50 objects onto the monkey and uh, have sliders for each of one, then uh, this would be a very uh, good way of doing it with this uh, BioBlender add-on. All right. Uh, having said that, uh, let's go back to uh, the biological aspect of this. Uh, so let's add our uh, vesicle. Now, as you guys notice, I had some things uh, here before. So let me go and delete this protein collection that we just created, and then this one that I had here on the top. Let me just uh, go back to being the protein. Uh, my emitter, move my emitter out of that collection. Uh, so I had this uh, basically the two proteins we had before uh, in a previous video that we were uh, looking I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, before I scatter them here I'm just gonna go to a cross section of zero in this case uh, and what I'm going to do here is basically uh, show you how you can create uh, some nice uh, organelles inside uh, really fast so one way to do this would be to basically uh, shift D on our selection uh, we can press escape and now S to scale it uh, let's say we don't want it to be a sphere so again we can uh, select it um, we can scale it in uh, oh, we could scale it in X or we can uh, as always uh, grab it and then change uh, oh, in fact this is changing the, the scale of our lipids so uh, what we would have to do would be scale it in the similar fashion but we want to do it uh, with uh, in edit mode so let me go and do that again shift the, this go to edit mode and then now I scale in edit mode uh, that way we keep th that scale uh, alright so I'm gonna keep doing this uh, scale in 
y, uh, not in y, scale in x, uh, maybe this way. Uh, let me look how that's looking. Let me scale it down a little bit more. So let me scale it over a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so now that I have this, um, I can go ahead and maybe uh, rotate it, uh, move it over here. Uh, so that way now I have a membrane within a membrane. And now this, for some reason, is rotated. Uh, let me go and get back that rotation. All right. Uh, and again, we can uh, have the cross section of this particular object. Um, uh, in this case, uh, we're uh, we're reaching like the limits. Uh, like we're not getting that much empty space inside. Uh, but what we can do with that, uh, it's basically grab our larger object, go to edit. Uh, we can maybe scale this one up. Um, and then now we can have uh, this larger uh, organelles inside uh, that make yeah that way it looks better. So now that that is looking a much much better. So now let me go back to this view and then now I can select this, move it over here, uh, move this one over here. Uh, keep doing this. Um, let me just do it one more time. I can go ahead and rotate them uh, so they have some sort of random rotation. I could also move them in uh, within uh, uh, the membrane. I can even um, uh, move them back and forth, uh, but that's looking nice. And as you see, we can have, uh, and as I as I've said before in other videos, we can animate all of this so we could have our vesicle to be complete. Uh, so we start at minus 0.5, and then uh, oh, since we scale it now, this goes a little farther. Uh, but yeah, so now we could have uh, animate this and then have the membranes in the inside also show the inside. Uh, we can import some proteins to have all around uh, our. Uh, uh, all around our cytoplasm. Uh, I'll show how to do this, uh, a way to do this here. Uh, for now, let me go ahead and grab my uh, larger object. And uh, since I have two proteins here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and press scatter. And it's basically going to scatter those two uh, uh, proteins that I had in, in my membrane. As in this case, we have, uh, let's just make sure they have the same cross section. Uh, so now that we have this, we have uh, our um, uh, scattered proteins on top of our membrane. Uh, now we can maybe also focus on the inside. So we could add uh, some other proteins and uh, basically put them uh, how we would want them inside. Uh, I'm going to show another way of doing this. Uh, so another way of doing this, and uh, let me let me show another way of doing this. So for now, let me delete this collection of proteins so it's not too crowded uh, and let me also uh, delete this protein, uh, these membranes inside so it's not too crowded and we get to see the effect. Alright, so now that we are here I'm first gonna show a way of doing this with molecules but it's the same way with proteins. Uh, so uh, as you see here we have uh, molecules bottom here uh, that basically uh, it, it says to emit and what this is going to do is going to create a void system of whatever we put inside a molecules collection. So what I did before uh, I started recording was that I type molecules uh, as we did in another uh, video. Uh, so I have a collection here of uh, alanine, ATP, uh, um, glucose, uh, water and so on. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab my object uh, that I want those particles to follow or those molecules to follow. And once I have that object, I'm going to press uh, emit. And as you see, this is going to create a plane. Uh, now, uh, since the scale, uh, so let me go back to a more uh, reasonable scale. So let me select it all. Let me go to maybe this scale. All right. Uh, so now that I'm in this scale, as would, at least that my plane is outside my uh, uh, main object, I can then hit uh, uh, the play button. And what that's going to generate, as you see here, it's going to basically kind of simulate uh, a phenomena of like diffusion uh, of all these molecules within the cytoplasm. So uh, this is a nice way of getting some movement into our uh, scene. Uh, so if we get really close to this, and then we can go uh, again to shader view here. Uh, let me go into cycles. And as we see here, uh, once let me pick a nice angle. And then once the noise uh, starts disappearing, then we do see all these different molecules uh, moving around inside uh, our uh, inside our cell or our vesicle. Depends on what we want this to be representing. Uh, and then this works uh, again. Uh, this is right now is because I have uh, 
molecules in, uh, inside this molecules collection, but I could also have um, a different thing and that can also be helpful to scattering proteins around our scene. Um, otherwise, we, we could always uh, import new proteins. Let's say, for example, we want to have ubiquitin in our scene, so we go to surface, uh, we don't want the, we want not the molecule, but we want the actual protein. We import ubiquitin and now we can, uh, so for this one it's best to do alt D, that way we create an instance and then we keep doing alt D and then we can just uh, randomly rotate them and place them uh, with different tools that we uh, can find in uh, Blender. Um, again, uh, he, these ones are not, uh, we can move them and place them and rotate them randomly uh, so that also gives more, uh, uh, makes our scene more crowded. Um, if we want, if we would want those to move, as I said, uh, I can go ahead and delete. Uh, so let me go ahead and delete uh, this. Let me also go ahead and delete uh, these new proteins created. So let me delete all these ubiquitins. Uh, so I'm only left with this one. Now uh, let me delete all the molecules inside of molecules. And then if I add a uh, ubiquitin to molecules, and then I grab uh, my uh, main object and generate, gener uh, press emit. This should generate now a bunch of ubiquitins uh, instead of my um, instead of molecules. Now I have a ubiquitin over there, and again I can play, press the uh, play button, and then this is a way again to get uh, movement into our scene. Uh, in this case, there are too many. Uh, the way we can work that uh, we can go to the physics tab, and then uh, press here. Maybe we just want 50 ubiquitins would be uh, okay, and then uh, we can just have them be scattered. Um, uh, we can also play around with the size of the plane, that way we don't get them that crowded. Uh, but we can change all these settings, uh, that way we get a nice distribution of these proteins around. And they would be just be moving uh, following that Boyd's uh, simulation. Um, and yeah, that, that's kind of a way to combine uh, combining uh, membranes within membranes, emitting molecules inside, so we uh, simulate diffusion. We can also distribute proteins inside, that way uh, again, I can have more than ubiquitin. I can have all different. Let's say if I also want to include um, here uh, uh, aquaporin. So this it doesn't make biological sense, but uh, to have aquaporin being floating around. But I could also have that. Uh, um, and yeah, uh, so that's uh, again another part of the workflow. Uh, next time we will uh, talk about DNA, and then in the last part we will talk about uh, viruses.